From now on, no one's allowed to kill this guy unless we say they can. And we almost certainly won't. <laughs> unless they have a really compelling reason. Is that him? It uh, couldn't be him. He promised he'd stay in his office until we got there. Yeah, probably not him. I doubt it's him. Definitely not him. It was him. There are three career criminals with one shot at freedom. Now they're working for the feds who put them away. These are the women of She Spies. Bad girls gone good. <laughs> In the same pattern for six months. CEO gets a threatening letter, always with some personal detail indicating access. It says resign or die, and he resigns or dies. Isn't death kind of like resigning? <laughs> it's a golden parachute made out of actual gold. Look, his gold's heavy and he'd crash. Somebody else talk now. There's worry up top that all these CEOs dying is a genuine threat to the nation's economy. Next thing you'll be telling us the stock market isn't safe. And there's a new letter for Norton Andrews, CEO of Plasticware, who has refused our protection. Has he seen our promo reel? The one where you're doing mid-air backflips, taking out two bad guys while making witty bon mots? I was meant to ask, how did you do that? Hired the Matrix guy. Cost a fortune, though. Now, the terminal says you're going in anyway, and since Andrews won't know, you'll have cover identities. What's this? An invitation? To a party with congressmen? I was gonna get to that after the mission. Uh, the chairman wants you to make an appearance, schmooze the lawmakers, you know, give a face to the program. And, you know, dress nice. <clears throat> dress nice? Yeah, you know. Nice. Why do I get the feeling it's not the program's face he wants us to show? Yeah, more like the program's body. And the program's legs and butts and gazonkers. Gazonkers? Oh, he's asking us to demean ourselves just to help the program. Yeah, even though our ratings are good. You know how we're rated compared to other government spy programs. Sorry. This is how the world works. But it shouldn't be. We should be judged by how good we are. The, the cases we solve, the bad guys we catch. Yes. And the next time you create a world, make it work that way. So we have to go. He told him yes. Now let me put it this way. You have to go. I told him yes. And now? I'm CEO of McQuaid Lifestyles. It's a shell company I set up. Supposedly makes uh, upscale home decor stuff. Kind of like Martha Stewart without the potential prison grace. Uh, you'll be there exploring a merger. And you're acting as my lawyer. Yeah, CEOs always have lawyers. Kind of like sharks and K-pods. They're parasite fish. It's 2 a.m. They shut down Miss Cleo. You watch Fishing with Maury. I'm an assistant at the company health club. All the employees have access to the health club, and all the employees are suspects. Ab crunches. Beg pardon? That's what I know about health clubs. Ab crunches. Sounds like a breakfast cereal. No, that's ab crunchies. <clears throat> and I'm... An executive secretary. You say executive, but all I hear is secretary. It's a very important position. You'll be working with the CEO's personal assistant. Oh, so I'm the secretary's secretary. Executive. You know that works? I'm totally fooled. If I were you, I'd go to Diddy's health club and get an attitude adjustment. Evidently, Andrews isn't the easiest guy to work with. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. It's, it's my fault. <laughs> After spending time as a highly trained, valuable government operative, it's hard being treated like an underpaid, overworked, never going to be promoted, subservient, glorified coffee gopher. But remember, you're not actually an underpaid, overworked, never going to be a uh, coffee person. You're only pretending to be an overpaid, underworked, no, never glorified. What were we talking about? How do they do that? There's a staple, Peggy, a staple in the memo. You know how I feel about staples in the memos. I'm sorry, sir. It won't happen again. Don't worry. Don't tell me what to do. This a new girl? Oh my God, he's gone blind. What? Oh, I'm standing right here. That's one. What? What's one? He gives every employee two times to tick him off. Third time, you're out. Mr. Andrews can be a handful, but working for him should be truly rewarding. Mm. Do I have to buy my own kick-me sign? Shane, no matter how it looks, we secretaries are critical to this company. We do the work, we hold the secrets. 
We are the bloodstream of the living, breathing organism that is plasticware. No. Excuse me, Mr. Andrews. I didn't understand before, but I really need to keep my job. So if you could just explain to me exactly how you'd like to humiliate me, from now on, I will try to be demeaned and debased in just the way you want. That's much better. <clears throat> you, you got that that was sarcasm, right? DDA, you're just a little slip of a thing, aren't you? Well, if a little slip is, say, five foot, hundred pounds, then technically I'm a monstrously overgrown, grotesquely overweight slip of a thing. Mm. I'm Mueller, and this is fit for business. I've set up franchises and corporate headquarters all over the U.S. And I want you to tell me the most important thing about working in a health club. Being healthy? Being clubby? Not being nosy. Our clients are powerful men. Who, and women. Who expect privacy, so when a man or wants, woman. wants to be alone, you will let him or be, her. be alone. You won't have much to do. I'll handle all the real workout stuff. You just do the chick things. Uh, Mueller, I don't really think that fitness and health are particularly male or female. Well, let me tell you something. Fitness is muscle. The problem is that a lot of the women... And men. And women. They like that touchy-feely stuff, which is why you're here. You're gonna teach them junk like yoga. Oh, I don't know yoga. Like a master. I mean, I'm good. I'm damn good. But compared to someone who's better than me, I'm not as good as them. Yeah, what's there to learn? It's just stupid. Ooh, I'm stretching. Ooh, I'm breathing. Harsh words, but you clearly know your yoga. Come on, it's all total bull while you yogis are just... Hey, I'm barely a yogi. Get it? Bear. Yogi. Yogi bear. Go on. While you get yourself centered, men work out, men build up their bodies, men make something out of themselves. While women waste their time becoming one with the universe. <laughs> exactly. You want to see God? Watch me do a front lat spread. Suddenly I'm an atheist. Fine. We don't have to agree. Just handle the chick stuff. I'll try to keep out of your way. Yeah, good idea. Since I could leg press you while getting a rub down. There's an image I'll need years of therapy to erase. Huh? Mueller, some people probably come here to work out their aggressions. Have you noticed any employees with, you know, violent tendencies? No. <sighs> so, I have coffee. Coffee and Bavarian burdock root with the bay leaves and hazelnut cream. Will that take long, dear? No. You'll have it as soon as monkeys fly off my butt. That material is adorable. I have a pool cover made out of that. Oh, no, I don't. It's actually repurposed truck tires. But maybe I should. Jameson, take a note. Pool cover out of business suit. Mm. Thank you, dear. <laughs> she is a treasure. He is a treasure. And you? Oh, you're fine. I mean, this whole company is a fine. I can't believe no one snapped you up yet. Plastic housewares? It's almost too adorable. Jameson, is it too adorable? Oh, it's just under the too adorable wire. <laughs> Miss McQuaid, I understand that you want to check out my operation, but I have to wonder why I've never heard of you. I can answer that. McQuaid Lifestyles is a Dutch subsidiary of a Lithuanian partnership with a German, French, German company wholly owned by two Bahrainian oil sheiks who prefer to remain anonymous. Yes, and Mike and Jimmy, oops, the anonymous oil sheiks, <laughs> want to explore the framework of the concept of the notion of the idea of a possible merger with you. And do you know why? Because it'd be adorable. I <laughs> like the way this man thinks. Ashtray into doily. Ashtray into doily? Ashtray into doily. Simply pulverize the glass into cunning one and a half millimeter shards, weave into a tabby cross-cut pattern, and you've got a shimmering silver doily. Well, that'll turn any party into a celebration and vice versa. It's a good idea. Ah! Don't throw that out. Just 1,500 more and you've got an unspeakably adorable Christmas Hanukkah Kwanzaa ball. Don't tell me what to do. Don't tell me to don't tell you what to do. Don't tell me not to don't tell you to don't tell me what to do. Did I give? Miss McQuaid, you should know that my overriding concern in a merger is the welfare of my workers. And the only thing that could change that is if the deal gave me huge heaping truckloads of cash. In which case, to hell with the workers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, excuse me. I've got to do this. Every morning at 10.30, I call a different sales rep. Stop! Don't tell me! It's a bomb. The card is wired to a bomb. What's going on? There's a wire attached to that card. There's probably a bomb underneath. Okay, new girl. Take it. What? I don't even get dental. That's two. But I do have some experience with bombs. One and a half. You can't let it go or it'll detonate. You gotta keep it grounded. Uh, let me see your shoes. 
Ooh, wrong shoes. At five hundred dollars? Jameson. Here. What? Come on. Here. Come on. Oh. Cut the wire. Well, why? Why me? Because you're wearing sneakers. Damn casual two says. There are no sharp objects on the desk. We don't allow to have scissors. But in a pinch, a letter opener, a pen, and two elastic bands makes scissoring a celebration and vice versa. On. Find out who tried to kill me and fire them. Yes, sir. You're welcome. Mr. Andrews, who knows you make a call at 10.30 every day? Oh, my God. Susie. Your wife? His best friend's wife. Would she want to kill you? Hey, I'm having sex with her. She might. Is there anyone else? Frank Conrad, the vice president. He's vicious and ambitious and... He wants your riches? Listen, I don't tell people how to run their business, but at Plastic Wear, the support staff is seen and not heard. Right, girls? So, does this mean the merger's off? Astonishment! If I refuse to merge with every company whose CEO got death threats, I'll be back at grammar school selling shoelace puppets for a 30% markup. Good. Now I have to fire everybody in security. So it was Conrad. Could be anyone. Everyone hates the guy. But only because he's a scum-sucking scum-sucker. Good. Evaluate the situation dispassionately. I heard someone tried to kill Andrews. Is everyone okay? No. I'm in a constant state of degradation. Seen but not heard. I haven't been that humiliated since the chairman told us to slut up for that party. Ah, oh, but half of the time he put us in that horse suit. Yeah, we were in the back. Oddly enough, I enjoyed that. But speaking of humiliation, why'd you tell Mueller I know yoga? It's what he wanted. Oh, well, you think it's easy, coming up with cover stories for three beautiful ex-cons every week. You think I just walk into the hospital where the bad guy is and say, hey, well, anybody need a beautiful ex-con chief of surgery and two beautiful ex-con radiologists? It takes time. It takes planning. Okay, fine. I'll work it out. Here she is, one genuine beautiful ex-con Hungarian princess. Put her in your hotel in the room above the Chinese spy. Well, you think that stuff just happens? No, and we appreciate what you do. Three beautiful ex-con Siberian lap dancers desperately need access to your security vault. You think that doesn't take selling? Siberian lap dancers? Oh. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that, that's next week's mission. Yeah, I, I already ordered the Parkinson's stilettos. Jack? What? Oh, that, oh. that was a joke. <laughs> Siberian lap dancers. Hey, hey, jokes don't have to be funny. Uh, sometimes they tell us about ourselves. I'll, uh, I'll just wait here. Shane, that was very impressive. Oh. Where'd you learn about explosives? Uh, Matt Bomber wants booby trap my house. So do you think it's the vice president? Uh, Conrad doesn't really seem the evil scheming type, mm. but you never know with people. Mm -hmm. So you've had a heck of a morning. Mr. Andrews gave you two points and you saved his life. <laughs> I only regret half of that. <laughs> Shane, I understand how you feel, but ask yourself, is it right to think that way about your boss? No matter how he treats us, don't we owe him our loyalty? No. Peggy, think of all the corporate scandals. Now, who is it who always stands up to blow the whistle? Women. It's always women. Now, sure, we're loyal. We always stand by our men. But if they ignore what we say, if they mistreat people, if they jeopardize the business by being testosterone adult jerk brains, then we do something. You are an interesting woman, Shane. I like you. Where are you going? Oh, a bunch of secretaries have a fitness class every day, kind of. Kind of fitness? Well, you know, girls, we get together, gossip. Sometimes there are knee bins involved. <laughs> it's just a way to let down our hair. Oh, that sounds like fun. Can I come? Well, we're always looking for new people. Let me ask the others. This is what it's all about. This is why we put up with the horrible hours, the endless pressure, the broken families and the ruined lives. For plastic leprechaun boy with his pants falling down? It's a salt shaker. Ah. Oh. Oh. Would you like to see Pepper? No. 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 You know, plastics is our future. I thought it was children. It changed. And if plastic is our future, then I am plastic. There's a little bit of me in every product. Uh, you can certainly be proud of your company. Don't tell me what to do. Awkward. <clears throat> But getting back to the presentation, I noticed that wages are at an industry low while hours worked are at an industry high. Thank you. I drive my men hard, but only so I can make more money. Do you think they resent you? Absolutely. They're not morons. Well, okay, they are, but they still resent me. Hey, one of them's trying to kill me. And that doesn't bother you? I take it as a sign of respect. They know that you can't make an omelet without breaking human lives. Yeah, I, actually, the chart show you, you haven't been doing that well recently. Are you insane? I have eight houses. I have a plane that takes me to my jet. I meant the company. Oh, yeah, that's in the number. 
It's so refreshing to see a company whose CEO isn't obsessed with turning out great product for fair prices. No, this is the 2000s, dear. Corporate profits are a wave of the past. The only way for a CEO to get ahead is for a CEO to get ahead. So, <clears throat> what you're saying is that your company is a thin candy shell filled with chocolate for the owner. Which could be you. So, welcome to Yoga 101. <clears throat> Jokes don't have to be funny. Sometimes they tell us about ourselves. Okay, so, class, how do you usually start? We breathe. Okay, let's breathe. Uh, the leader tends to lead us. Right. Now, close your eyes. Concentrate. Exhale. Now, inhale all of the oxygen. Not just the nitrogen. Now, inhale through your left arm and exhale through the right. Now, breathe through your lungs. Which is easier. Now, bend at the waist, push your hands into the floor, and try to touch the ceiling with your butt. Anyone who actually does it, please see me after class. How about the poses? Poses? We've done warrior, cobra, dog, and tree. <laughs> Here's some advice. <clears throat> if one of you does tree, no one else should do dog. We want new ones. Okay. Keep being tall. Naughty nurse. Beat up that guy. Bribed politician. Emotionally disturbed ostrich. Everyone's still talking about your saving Andrew's life yesterday. <laughs> I've decided you're no secretary. With your intelligence, courage, initiative, you are clearly meant for more. There are very few women like you in this company. Would you join our group? The, the fitness group. You uh, know what you said yesterday about standing by your man only to a certain point than doing something? This group is committed to doing whatever it takes to save plastic wear from men like Andrews. Whatever it takes? Does that include violence? It might, Shane. It just might. Count me in. Oh, hold on, girl. There's a test. I hope I pass. I hope you do, too. Hello. Right, Jack. I'll find out more about that private class as soon as I can. Gotta go. You locked the door. Good. Good. Don't want just anyone coming in and getting healthy. Know what this is? The lotus position really channels your energy. I've been doing a lot of reading. For example, I know about the um, Eightfold Path to Enlightenment. <clears throat> One is Yama, ethical standards. In your case, the question to ask is, am I the best large, intimidating, sexist, dumb guy I can be? Then there's Asanas. The body is the temple of the spirit. Respect your body by not making any awkward punching or choking movements. Okay, Mueller, I'm sorry. But from now on, there's no more Miss Nice Yogi. I'm gonna have to ask you to move aside, or I'll kick you so hard, you won't know your yin from your yang. Not that you do now, but you know, I'm threatening. off the Eightfold Path. This is awful. Not only can't I hurt you, I can't banter with you. Why don't you try channeling your energy? Good idea.
Congratulations. You're now one with the floor. You see? You can banter. If you try. So, are we gonna do this thing? I'm not getting rich just standing around here, you know? Actually, I make about $20,000 an hour, so I am. But, you know, not what this little guy deserves. Oh, there you go again, inspiring us with pantsless salt shakers. I'll be honest with you, Norton. I like your business. Well. My only complaint is that it's a little, I don't know, industrially? You know, would it kill you to throw up some wallpaper? Maybe a few throw pillows? And the odor! Can you say potpourri? Jameson, if we buy it, potpourri for everyone. I think you've solved the labor problem. Dry remark. The perfect conversational gamut to liven up any sophisticated dinner party. Unfortunately, we're not having a dinner party, and the remark was less dry than Eric, but still, two chairs for trying. <laughs> Don't drink that! Don't tell me what to do! I only meant with someone trying to kill you should be more careful. Do you mind if I test that for you first? Yummels! Just decaf. Still, I don't want you putting anything in your mouth that hasn't gone through me first. Can I rephrase that? If you want a vitamin, just say so. At least let me have my diet pill. No! Poison? Worse. Caffeinated. He knew he needed to drink decaf or else the interaction with the drug ephedra in the diet pill would give him a heart attack. Well, at least I wouldn't have to change the picture. Before we begin, I have some news. Mr. Andrews has been killed. You're in it with Conrad. You're working together so he can take over the company. And I have some more good news. Shane would like to join us. Oh. I've rarely seen a more qualified applicant, but she will have to go through the tests. Are you ready, Shane? Ready. First, we need some data. Have you reached a typing speed of 175 or higher? Yes. Are you familiar with Excel, Palm, PowerPoint? Yes. Have you ever killed a man? Oh. It's okay if you have it. <laughs> now, there's a physical component to membership. You'll have to have extensive martial arts training, but given what I know about you, I'd say the only question left is character. Remember, we're opposed by ruthless men, so we need women uninhibited by conventional morality. I still have library books from grammar school. We'd prefer you prove your ruthlessness right now. Mueller! This woman was caught snooping around the fitness class. We need to find out what she knows and who she works for. You have to get that information any way you can. What if I refuse? It would mean I misjudged you. And since we can't have our activities become public knowledge, we'd have to... Withdraw the offer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let me along with her. Oh, no, no, no. We need to see what you do. No. You need to see the results. All right, then. Ladies, Mueller. Hey, hey, watch the language, chicky. Who's the steroid case? My boy toy. I'm wrapped around my finger. Yeah, and he's got you wrapped in 50 pound polypropylene. We're having issues. Ah! What's that? We want them to think you're beating me up, right? I figure as long as I scream, we can talk. Oh, okay, that's, that's very clever. Thanks. Ah! So what's the plan? I've been working on an idea where I built a time machine to just before we took this mission and we faked colds. I just haven't worked out the details. I say we stonewall. Ah! Tell them I'm a flaky yoga chick who opened the wrong door. Not gonna happen. They will kill you. Hey, if they kill me, I'll deal with it. Ah! Okay, not only are we in huge trouble, but now I'm getting a headache. In case the time machine doesn't pan out, you have a better idea? Yeah, I'll just tell them I couldn't get anything out of you. Then you'll die. Ah, worse things have happened. God, we're so noble. I love us. Ah! Are you hurt? No, but my throat's killing me. Okay, so you're trying to save me, and I'm trying to save you, but the only way to prove that I couldn't get you to talk is to make it look like I slammed you around. I suppose. Ah! I win. She wouldn't talk. I tried everything. I'd like to be one of you, but I have no excuse. I failed. So, do what you have to do. I'll kill her. I'll kill her. I'll kill you, then her. <clears throat> 
Jane, we're not like men. We're not just result-oriented. What's important is your attitude. True, you didn't make her talk, but you beat the hell out of her, and that shows you care. Congratulations, Shane. You're one of us. Something like this once happened to me. I was throwing a dinner party, and one of the guests started coughing up blood. Well, as you know, that's pretty much the definition of party pooping. So what was I to do? I called in the paramedics and improvised a new last-minute look. A night in the ER, flashing lights, lots of whites, chicken strips and jello. Yes, it was an evening that would live forever in the annals of theme adaptation due to E. coli. <laughs> Thank you, Jameson. He's not only my lawyer, he's one of my biggest fans. <laughs> Anywho, uh, we know this has been a terrible shock, and we really appreciate your staying after hours to talk with us. Oh, no, no, that's fine. I'm happy to talk with you. Really happy. So under the management structure of Plasticware, you automatically become the new president? Yes. As you know, Norton and I were in the middle of a deal that could quite possibly turn out to be the cutest merger in a houseware's history. Yes, that's terrific. I'm all for it. Well, we just need to know if his tragic death is going to cause any significant delay. Uh, you know, whether you're going to put this deal through and, of course, reap the financial rewards. Yes. Yes, I am. Oh. This deal will go through. You don't have anything to worry about. I'm completely in control of the company and, you know, everything. So, there's nothing to worry about because I'm in control. I am so sorry I'm late, Mr. <clears throat> Conrad. Have you been assuring Ms. McQuaid about the merger? Uh, yes, yes, I have. Believe me, I have. I have, haven't I? Wasn't I doing just that? Oh, we're totally assured. Yes, I <laughs> think we have a very good idea of how the company's going to be run. <laughs> Testing. After you left, I found this on her. So I figured, what the hell, talk real loud, see what happens. And what do you know? You three said hello. Cassie, when we get out of this, would you please knock me unconscious? Sure. Any particular reason why? Yeah, it's already happened twice today. Rule of three, you know. I'm sorry. I didn't see any other way out. I could have pretended to be unconscious. Oh, you're right. But first, I want to thank you all for staying after closing. So you're going to kill us and work late for free? <laughs> That's just wrong. <laughs> I appreciate you being here because this could be a very special occasion. I'm hoping that these three ladies will join us in our quest for respect and justice. Am I missing something? It seems your quest is knocking off Andrew so Conrad can take over. Conrad's our puppet. He does what we say. In exchange for? Well, we considered sexual favors and money, but then we offered not to kill him. He was fine with that. So you're going to run the company? Gag him. Men should be seen and not heard. No, Jameson, or whoever you really are, I'm not taking over plasticware. We are. We're a collective. And it isn't plasticware we're after. It's the world. Oh, well, it's about time. I beg your pardon? We haven't fought anyone who's wanted to take over the world. So far, it's just been technology secrets, nuclear triggers, penny any stuff. Yeah, she's right. Finally, some stature to our bad guys. We're bad girls. That really is irritating. Tell me about it. Hello? Explaining the evil plan? Well, you should have thought of that before we got captured. Plasticware is just a small part of a very large movement. A secret society of secretaries. We're tired of being taken advantage of by bosses. We lie to their wives, we pick up their laundry. They say knock off at six and think we're even. Well, we're not. We're getting even now. So you fly around the country to recruit prospects while trying to figure out how to get to the boss. While Mueller uses the health club as a cover for training. You find a front man like Conrad, get rid of the CEO, and you take over the company. Whoever you are, you're obviously here to stop us. Just do me one favor. Take a look at our presentation. I think it might just change your minds and your lives. Val? Traditionally, taking over the world is a one-man operation. And I do mean man. The reason we'll succeed is we're harnessing the energy and talent of America's most undervalued resource, secretaries. In the standard corporate structure, you have imbecilic men screaming incomprehensible orders to submissive women who actually get the work done. The secret society of secretaries has a different structure. First, the boss resigns or dies. Then the secretary takes power. It's more efficient because a useless layer has been eliminated. With no inflated salaries for corrupt bosses, there is a significant savings. And it's more profitable because men are stupid. The result, a new American and soon global economy, one built on the drive, enthusiasm, and imagination of secretaries. Thanks, Val. 
Now, you all have clipboards. The front pages are for the information we want, and the back ones are application forms. We'll need those in triplicate. And if we refuse to join, you'll kill us? How could you do that? We're women, too. Because you should be with us, not against us. You probably take orders from a man, right? And you probably feel less valued for what you are and what you accomplish than the way you look. You know, you've got a point. Sometimes I think half the reason we're successful is because people look at us and underestimate us. <laughs> because you're babes. I was going to say women, but okay, go with that. This isn't just about gender. It's about power and humiliation, hierarchies and underlings, bosses and workers. If this is about power and bosses, then how come you're the only one here who's telling everyone else what to do? And what's the point of getting rid of dishonest, heartless men if you act just like them? Is that the way you all feel? Yeah. Then we're back where we started. If you won't talk, we are prepared to multitask our office equipment. Meaning? We found some unique uses for the copy machine, the copy maker, the stapler. Ouch. Oh. Well, <clears throat> where should we uh, put our clipboards? <laughs> wearing a mask. She's a he. But if you're a man, then why did you do all this? For money. Those letters weren't just death threats. They were extortion notes. So the whole reason you did this was to take revenge on the men who controlled you, and all this time, you were being controlled by a man. Well, that must be very discouraging. <laughs> well, I think we've all learned a valuable lesson from this. We have? Sure. Never try to take over the international economy as part of a radical feminist agenda if you're not sure your leader isn't a transvestite. Oh, yeah, no yeah. kidding. We were just talking about mm -hmm. that. Ladies, congratulations. Yesterday was a real triumph. The chairman is very pleased. He looks forward to seeing a lot of you at that party with those congressmen tonight. But he won't see a lot of us. Not as much as he wants. Just this. Uh, what's with the dresses? They seem a little conservative. We're tired of being exploited, Jack. And those secretaries went about it the wrong way, but they had the right idea. Too many American women are giving up their brains and their talent to make American men look good. And no matter how smart or successful they are, women are judged by their appearance. With us, it stops here. If no one cares what we actually do, then this is what will look like the chairman's party. Well, uh, I'm not supposed to tell you this, but the party wasn't the chairman's idea. Evidently, the head of our Congressional Oversight Committee has been tracking us very closely. He's read all the reports in depth, and he's thinking of extending our program another year. So he wanted to meet you personally. Oh. That's interesting. So what you're saying is that if we make a good impression tonight, we get to stay out of jail for another year, the program continues, and we get to continue saving the world on an almost weekly basis? Yep.
Okay, the CEO got a very serious death threat. There's not a minute to lose. Right, no side trips, no diversions. We stay single-mindedly on one purpose, a rapid tour of the company's offices. Right, absolutely. No interruptions or digressions for any reason whatsoever. Ooh, where's the next? First thing we ask for is daily schedule. Everyone he sees, everyone he talks to. Check. And anyone he meets has to go through clearance. Background check, family check, job check. Check, check, check. And we'll track his finances so we know everyone he pays money to. Check. Or cash. Point is, from now on, no one's allowed to kill this guy unless we say they can. And we almost certainly won't. Unless they have a really compelling reason. Is that him? Uh, couldn't be him. He promised he'd stay in his office until we got there. Yeah, probably not him. I doubt it's him. Definitely not him. It was him. There are three career criminals with one shot at freedom. Now they're working for the feds who put them away. These are the women of She Spies. Bad girls gone good. the same pattern for six months. CEO gets a threatening letter, always with some personal detail indicating access. It says resign or die, and he resigns or dies. Isn't death kind of like resigning? Yeah, it's a golden parachute made out of actual gold. Look, because gold's heavy and you'd crash. Somebody else talk now. There's worry up top that all these CEOs dying is a genuine threat to the nation's economy. Next thing you'll be telling us the stock market isn't safe. And there's a new letter for Norton Andrews, CEO of Plasticware, who has refused our protection. Has he seen our promo reel? The one where you're doing mid-air backflips, taking out two bad guys while making witty bon mots? I was meant to ask, how did you do that? Hired the Matrix guy. Cost a fortune, though. Now, the terminus says you're going in anyway, and since Andrews won't know, you'll have cover identities. What's this? An invitation? To a party with congressmen? I was going to get to that after the mission. Uh, the chairman wants you to make an appearance, schmooze the lawmakers, you know, give a face to the program. And, you know, dress nice. <clears throat> dress nice? Yeah, you know. Nice. Why do I get the feeling it's not the program's face he wants us to show? Yeah, more like the program's body. And the program's legs and butts and gazonkers. Gazonkers? Oh, he's asking us to demean ourselves just to help the program. Yeah, even though our ratings are good. You know how we're rated compared to other government spy programs. Sorry. This is how the world works. But it shouldn't be. We should be judged by how good we are. The, the cases we solve, the bad guys we catch. Yes. And the next time you create a world, make it work that way. So we have to go? You told him yes? Now let me put it this way. You have to go. I told him yes. And now? I'm CEO of McQuaid Lifestyles. It's a shell company I set up. Supposedly makes uh, upscale home decor stuff. Kind of like Martha Stewart without the potential prison grace. Uh, you'll be there exploring a merger. And you're acting as my lawyer. Yeah, CEOs always have lawyers. Kind of like sharks and K-pods. They're parasite fish. It's 2 a.m. They shut down Miss Cleo. You watch Fishing with Maury. I'm an assistant at the company health club. All the employees have access to the health club, and all the employees are suspects. Ab crunches. Beg pardon? That's what I know about health clubs. Ab crunches. Sounds like a breakfast cereal. No, that's ab crunchies. <clears throat> and I'm... An executive secretary. You say executive, but all I hear is secretary. It's a very important position. You'll be working with the CEO's personal assistant. Oh, so I'm the secretary secretary. Executive. You know that works? I'm totally fooled. Mm. Why were you I go to Diddy's health club and get an attitude adjustment? Evidently, Andrews isn't the easiest guy to work with. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. It's, it's my fault. <laughs> After spending time as a highly trained, valuable government operative, it's hard being treated like an underpaid, overworked, never going to be promoted, subservient, glorified coffee gopher. But remember, you're not actually an underpaid, overworked, never going to be a uh, coffee person. You're only pretending to be an overpaid, underworked, no, never glorified. What were we talking about? How do they do that? There's a staple, Peggy, a staple in the memo. You know how I feel about staples in the memos. I'm sorry, sir. It won't happen again. Don't worry. Don't tell me what to do. This is a new girl? Oh, my God, he's gone blind. What? Oh, I'm standing right here. 
That's one. What? What's one? He gives every employee two times to tick him off. Third time, you're out. Mr. Andrews can be a handful, but working for him should be truly rewarding. Mm. Do I have to buy my own kidney sign? Shane, no matter how it looks, we secretaries are critical to this company. We do the work, we hold the secrets. We are the bloodstream of the living, breathing organism that is plasticware. No. Excuse me, Mr. Andrews. I didn't understand before, but I really need to keep my job. So if you could just explain to me exactly how you'd like to humiliate me, from now on, I will try to be demeaned and debased in just the way you want. That's much better. <clears throat> you, you got that that was sarcasm, right? DDA. You're just a little slip of a thing, aren't you? Well, if a little slip is, say, five foot hundred pounds, then technically I'm a monstrously overgrown, grotesquely overweight slip of a thing. Mm. I'm Mueller, and this is fit for business. I've set up franchises and corporate headquarters all over the U.S. And I want you to tell me the most important thing about working in a health club. Being healthy? Being clubby? Not being nosy. Our clients are powerful men. Who, and women. Who expect privacy, so when a man or wants, woman. wants to be alone, you will let him or be, her. be alone. You won't have much to do. I'll handle all the real workout stuff. You just do the chick things. Uh, Mueller, I don't really think that fitness and health are particularly male or female. Well, let me tell you something. Fitness is muscle. The problem is that a lot of the women... And men. And women. They like that touchy-feely stuff, which is why you're here. You're going to teach them junk like yoga. Oh, I don't know yoga. Like a master. I mean, I'm good. I'm damn good. But compared to someone who's better than me, I'm not as good as them. Yeah, what's there to learn? It's just stupid.